June 5th, 2023 to order. The um, invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Council Member Jones. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you as a humble people. We ask that you guide our hands in our decision making for the people, property, and finances of this great city. We ask that you look over the first responders as they work to protect our citizens. We ask that you continue looking over our great city as you have for the past 200 years. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> and will the uh, clerk of council take the roll, please? Council member Wilkins. Council member Jones. Present. Council member Perry. Here. Council member Wiesner. Present. Council member Spar. Here. Council member Beck. Here. There are uh, a, there is a quorum this evening. We have uh, five members of city council present. Um, I am not uh, the president of council. Um, we have a unique situation this evening. Uh, the president of council is absent, um, so she is not here this evening to preside. Um, we also have a vacancy in the position of president pro tem um, that was previously uh, filled by uh, council member Steve Leppard, who uh, has resigned. And so we're waiting to fill that seat on council. But in the meantime, uh, council needs to elect uh, among its membership a president pro tem. Um, as the law director, I am just facilitating the, the uh, beginning of this meeting and then the election of that, uh, filling that position. The president pro tem will serve until the end of this calendar year. Um, council is, uh, reorganizes every two years following a municipal election. We have a municipal election this fall. So in January, uh, the uh, new position of uh, President Pro Tem and Clerk of Council will be filled by the new uh, council, um, all seven members who are elected, um, and any that are continuing on. So with that, uh, what I have done is I've prepared legislation, a resolution for council to introduce to fill the vacancy of President Pro Tem. I am aware of one person who is interested. Um, I've, all, I've filled uh, a resolution with that person's name, and I also have uh, uh, submitted a, a blank resolution, so um, another name could be uh, introduced. So I will now ask city council if there is a person who uh, would like to sign a resolution for the appointment of President Pro Tem. And I will recognize Council Member Spar. Yes, I would uh, like to introduce the uh, uh, resolution appointing um, Councilman, the Council Member Thacker. That's right. Uh, to President Pro Tem. Okay, and if you, I'll, I'll give you a moment that you could sign that, and I will uh, recognize th that introduction. And upon the uh, signing and date of that resolution, I'll ask the uh, Clerk of Council to read the resolution 23-23 uh, by a title. Resolution number 23-23, introduced by John Spar. Resolution appointing Cheyenne Thacker, Cheyenne L. Thacker, President Pro Tem of Tiffin City Council, beginning immediately and ending December 31st, 2023. That is the, the first and only uh, reading of resolution 23-23. Is there a, a motion for the approval of resolution number 23-23? Uh, Council Member Reisner um, moves to approve resolution number 23-23. Is there a second to that motion? Council Member Spar, second. Any discussion on the resolution? And I ask the uh, Clerk of Council to take a roll call vote, please. Council Member Jones? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Thank you. 
And resolution 23-23 passes five to zero. Uh, now the next step is to administer the oath of office to um, newly elected president pro tem council member Thacker. So if you could come here and we'll do that. And then you'll take over the meeting. Raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I, Cheyenne L. Thacker. I, Cheyenne L. Thacker. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter of the City of Tiffin. And the Charter of the City of Tiffin. I will in all respects. I will in all respects. Uphold and enforce. Uphold and enforce. The general laws of the state of Ohio. The general laws of the state of Ohio. And the charter and ordinances of the city of Tiffin. And the charter and ordinances of the city of Tiffin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of president pro tem. The duties of president pro tem. Of the city of Tiffin. Of the city of Tiffin. Seneca County, Ohio. Seneca County, Ohio. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Yes. Okay, thank you all. Um, if we could uh, discuss the minutes of the last regular meeting and the Committee of the Whole meetings of May 15th, 2023. Are there any changes, corrections, substitutions? Seeing none, the minutes will stand approved as written. Uh, now we're under the committee reports. Uh, Finance Committee, Kevin Reisner. Yes, uh, Madam President, I do have a report a finance committee meeting was held May 15th, 2023 at 547 p.m. in Tiffin City Hall Council Chambers. Attending were committee members Kevin Reisner, John Sparr, Steve Leppard, along with Council President Bridget Boyle, uh, Council Member Kenneth Jones, City Law Director Brent Howard, and Finance Director Kathleen Kaufman. Reisner called the meeting to order. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss Mayor's request for legislation 23-27 the request uh, for approval of credit card increase and any other business that comes before committee. Reasoner asked Kaufman to provide an overview of the request. She reported there have been problems occurring with the credit cards. Uh, departments ha generally have their own individual limits. There also is a company limit of 10,000. <coughs> this limit is no longer meeting the needs, so she asked to ask the limit be increased to 25,000. An example is when an employee is at a hotel traveling for training. She has had to authorize in two different cases. Reesner asked Kaufman uh, when the current limit was established, and she said it has been in place at least as long as she has been in her position. Since then, payment methods have evolved. Old payment methods and often involved bringing a check along. Credit cards are now used as a matter of convenience. Spar asked Kaufman how many cards there are and if all have the same limit. Not all department heads have cards, but more department heads have cards since the original policy was implemented. Most are at a 1,000 limit where the police, fire, mayor would be higher. And uh, police chief, fire chief, and mayor would be higher. Spar followed up asking if the new limit would increase the individual limits and Kaufman responded that this will be the case. Howard clarified the limits are at 1,000 for each department presently. This ordinance will increase the limits for police and fire to 3,000 each due to their activity. Leopard moved to authorize the ordinance, which has already been prepared for the evening's meeting under mayor's request for legislation 23-27. And I think that was that last meeting we, we already passed it. 
uh, re request for the approval of credit card increase uh, and was seconded by SPAR. The motion was carried unanimously. With no other business, the committee adjourned at 5.52 p.m. Thank you, Councilmember Reesner. Is there anybody from Law and Community Planning that has a report? No report, Madam President. Thank you. Um, materials and Equipment, Ken Jones. No report at this time, Madam President. Okay. Uh, personnel and Labor Relations, Councilmember Perry. No report, Madam President. Recreation and Public Property, is there anybody from that committee who could? No report, Madam President. Thank you, Councilmember Perry. Uh, street sidewalks and sewers, there's no report. Economic development and downtown planning. No Ms. report, Park. Madam President. Does anybody see a need for a committee of the whole meeting? Okay, seeing none, we're now under reports of the officers. Her Mayor, Her Honor, Mayor Dawn Yanantuno. Thank you, Madam President. I know you will all be shocked, but there are no proclamations to be read this evening. <laughs> I think this is a first in many, many months. Um, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to future K-9 handler officer Liz Miller for all of her hard work, commitment, and dedication to the fundraising effort to restart our K-9 program. She raised over $3,300 holding a bake sale in March at Walmart during terrible weather, recently held a cardio drumming event at Best Break, which raised $170, and worked a third Thursday barking lot party booth with the Qantas Club of Seneca County selling K-9 t-shirts. Thank you, Officer Liz, for all you do. I mean, that shows true dedication to the project that she's willing to put the time in for that. And so I know having a K-9 officer back at Tiffin Police Department is near and dear to my next guest, so I knew he wouldn't mind my dog report going first. I have invited back a special guest here this evening. Recently retired council member Steve Leppard is back with us along with a few people from his past who wanted to be here for him tonight. We have a special gift for you, Steve, but due to our tight budget, we couldn't begin to add all of the changes and dates for your tenure on council. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentlemen, in the back, in the kind of back row, would you like to say anything tonight? I would miss this for the world, Steve. Uh, Steve, I just want to—I want to thank you for your service to our community and our country, and the example that you've been to all these people. What it means to be um, an effective member of council. You were always prepared. You did your homework. You were honest. Uh, I always enjoyed uh, our conversations, especially our friendship. Uh, you're going to be missed, but I guess that uh, after serving all these years, if they didn't miss you, that would be a problem. But <laughs> I want to thank you again for uh, everything that you've done. I'm going to continue to pray for God's blessings on you and your family and uh, the rest of your life. And uh, again, thank you for allowing us to share your talents, uh, and you've made this a better community. Thanks. Thank you, Rich. Candy. <laughs> Check out the city administrator's <laughs> office. <laughs> I uh, had the privilege of, of being city administrator for seven years, and during that time, uh, learned a lot from Councilman Leppard about uh, being an honest person who's honest, has great integrity, and who loves the city of Tiffin. He has spent countless hours over the years devoted to doing what was the right thing for the city. It was never about politics. It was about what was right. And I know Bev has sacrificed a lot of her own time giving Steve the opportunity to do that. So thank you for donating him to us on occasion. Sometimes you were probably happy to do so. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a lot of wonderful people who have served on this council. Rich Vogt, who's here tonight, uh, Jim Roberts, Mark Hayes, uh, uh, and Steve Leppard, all great examples of how to lead with integrity. And Steve, uh, it's just 
such a loss to have you no longer on council, but I think you've made the right decision that there are things that we need to do in our lives. And as we look around us and lose friends, uh, we know it's time to, to take that time and, and live our life. Uh, so I'm sure everybody on console, everybody in the city uh, is happy to see you have time with Bev to spend. And thank you for your service. Uh, I hope God uh, graces you with a very long life and uh, a lot of happiness in your retirement. And I know Joe, is Joe Hartzell out there? Joe Hartzell was going to come, so maybe he forgot. So I'm not sure where he's at. I won't take up too much time, but we do have a little memento for Steve, uh, just something to um, keep and remember your time here. Uh, I have been involved with this community uh, as a reporter since uh, 2007 and used to show up at these meetings with much more hair. Um, <laughs> and uh, Steve was always someone who was uh, there to help me um, through that time as a reporter. And um, as I have continued on my professional career, You've always been a, a you know, a, a welcome person to, uh, to have conversations with and learn from. So I appreciate it. Thank you for everything you've done for me and for this city. Thank you. I don't think he had much more hair. <laughs> Can I? May I have a minute? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, for the first thing, I didn't know who was sitting in the back row and who was behind me and who was going to speak either for me or speak <laughs> ill of me. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, I'm very proud of the city of Tiffin, and I'm even more proud of the employees of the city of Tiffin. Uh, to the residents, you just don't understand the professionals that we have on board that take care of the city and take care of your problems. It, uh, for city councilmen, uh, we don't take care of your problems by ourselves. It's teamwork. It's not only the city councilman, it's the city administrator, it could be the uh, law director, uh, it could be the, uh, a department head of any department. And uh, very, very proud of the staff that uh, City of Tiffin has. Uh, I think the thing that I'm most proud of through my years <clears throat> is uh, being able to recognize Bernie Holman before he passed away by naming a bridge after him. As the mayor, as Mayor Mons had said, uh, Bernie was a bridge builder. He built bridges that joined people, departments together. And uh, I went to Mayor Mons, and uh, I think he might have already had this in his back pockets that he was going to do this. But I says, Aaron, I says, we've got to do something for Bernie. And he says, well, let's sit down and talk about it. And I think it was probably. Aaron's idea long before I had the idea and uh, to honor him and we came up with the uh, with the bridge and um, very grateful for you that for that mayor but uh, I'd like to thank everyone made a lot of friends uh, not only with the staff of the city but the public as well and uh, I'm gonna miss them too so thank you very much. I appreciate everything you've done for me. And uh, let's keep the city moving forward. have to recoup the other one? <laughs> well, 
Well, Steve, at, at the last meeting, as all of us stated up here, we're going to really miss you, and we've enjoyed your knowledge and experience and how kind you were to answer questions, and I hope we can still count on that from time to time if we have questions, and maybe some leadership help if, if anybody has questions on, on things. This way you'll still feel a part of us. I'm still getting mail. I'm still getting phone calls. <laughs> still getting email, too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but I, I do appreciate you coming back in this evening, and I appreciate Rich and Dale coming in also to make it a little more memorable for you to come in here. So, again, thank you so much for your true dedication to this city. We really appreciate it. Anyone else? I just wanted to know, uh, Steve, are you going to get a matching I Love Nap shirt, just like Beth has? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know uh, how we spent our uh, afternoon? Uh, uh, we went to a nursing home. Beth thought they were, we were there to entertain residents, but I think we were there to pick out our next room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Anyone else? Again, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Okay, we have with us tonight the CEO of TSEP, Aaron Montz, and his team for their biannual report to council. I did give Aaron a heads up that he would be preempted by council member Lefford, but he said that was okay. He wanted to be here for this. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor and uh, Madam President. I'm not sure how we follow that up. Uh, <laughs> Steve, gonna miss you. I guess I'm gonna say a few quick words before I get into this and kind of spend quick. Um, you know, serving with you for so long uh, in city government, I think we spent 15 or 16 years working together. I knew you from when I was about yay big at church growing up. And uh, the words that came into my mind sitting here were, were honest, uh, integrity, and leadership. Uh, and that is exactly what you emulated. Uh, you were... Uh, always 100% honest and you acted with integrity uh, every time and you and I had many disagreements over the years and never once was there a grudge held. We always understood where one another came from and anything you'd ever tell me whether it was in public or in confidence was always honest straightforward truth and I always appreciated that about you even when we vehemently disagreed with one another. Um, it was great to have you and then just the the leadership that you emulated daily you were never the president of council, except for a few times acting. You never wanted that role. You, you always wanted to, to help the community. You never, uh, you never wanted to have your face out there on the front page of the newspaper or on social media. You just wanted to get the job done and do what was best for the residents of Tiffin. And I can't thank you enough for that. And you're going to be missed. You're really going to be missed. So uh, keep yourself healthy and uh, check in on us from time to time. I see you walking the dog at Oakley Park, right? <laughs> uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're happy to be here to give the semi-annual update to City Council. Uh, as you all know, uh, we like to be concise, so we're not going to be up here for too long. Uh, two hours or less, we'll have you out of here, uh, guaranteed. Um, but really quick, the organization is going well. If you want to hit the next slide, you can. Organization is going very well. I wanted to include here at the beginning of this before I start, started talking some of the more boring things, the numbers and all of that, uh, a few pictures of our renovation of our building that's ongoing if you haven't had a chance to get a look at it. Uh, we expect to move in in late July onto the first floor at 96 South Washington Street. Uh, it, the renovation is going extremely well. Uh, as you probably have seen, if you've been out back, uh, the once sunken pit uh, that I won't say what Lenny Klaus calls the pit or used to call the pit uh, has been fixed. It's now at ground level. Uh, we'll be black topping that uh, to allow for increased parking downtown um, and, and deal with drainage issues that was had on that site. But these are just a few interior pictures as it's going along. If you want to hit the next one, Liz. And uh, yeah, they're painting inside. Painting's almost done. Floors and fixtures that go in soon. Uh, the exterior final paint will be put on uh, potentially starting this week and finishing up next week. And we're just excited to move into our new space and, and be a tenant here in downtown Tiffin and continue to support not only the city of Tiffin, but all of Seneca County. 
Uh, as you know, our mission uh, is economic and community development. Uh, we do that across Seneca County, except for the city of Fostoria. Uh, Renee Smith does a tremendous job over there. Uh, we have built tremendous rapport with Renee, and I know uh, she would say the same thing talking to her board. I go to her board meetings. She comes to our meetings. Uh, we really are, are like hand in glove with working together to try to develop Seneca County. Uh, this day and age with the world being uh, at everyone's fingertips, we have to work together and we have to realize that what is good for Tiffin is good for Fostoria. What's good for Fostoria is good for Tiffin. And I think for so long there was kind of that old mentality that Tiffin's on its island, Fostoria's on its island, the rural areas are on their little island, and we all kind of bicker and compete. But at the end of the day, we all come together and collaborate when we absolutely have to. The Justice Center is a great example of that. We're working to kind of bridge those gaps and bring things more to the state that we're working together as one entity. I try to help pitch projects in Fostoria when Renee needs help. If there's a project here in Tiffin or in rural Seneca County, uh, we've partnered with her on numerous things where she's given help, advice, uh, been on calls with us. And I think that just shows the spirit of collaboration and working together that we have locally in Seneca County that most other places do not. So I'm not gonna talk about all these initiatives because that alone is gonna take a half hour if I did that. I just put them up on the screen. Uh, Mayor, as you know, we've been working diligently at the SEDS. We've got another meeting coming up on the 21st that I think is about a three hour long meeting. So uh, bring your pillow, bring whatever you need to, caffeine pills uh, to get through it. Um, but as we know, that's important. It's another collaborative effort that Tiffin, Fremont, Sandusky County, Seneca County, all the townships are working together to develop this regional strategy because we're all having the same problems. We don't have enough workforce. Carol Owen will talk to you a little later about workforce. We don't have enough folks here to go around. So unemployment, you know, I, I get tired of hearing last year, uh, unemployment was one of the lowest levels we've had in history here in Seneca County. So it's not that people don't want to work. The workforce is at one of its largest levels we've been. Part of the problem is baby boomers are retiring. Steve, are you a baby boomer? No, okay, Steve's not a baby boomer. He retired anyway, so he's still not helping the situation. So uh, yeah, go find another career, Steve. We need, we need workers. The baby boomer generation had about 10 million more individuals in the workforce than the following two generations after it. So there is this significant gap that we have now in the workforce where baby boomers are retiring. Thank God many of them are working past when they, they could truly retire if they wanted of retirement age. There's this huge gap that we now have with baby boomers who have retired where younger individuals uh, are either not into the workforce yet, they're not interested in those kind of jobs, and as I already stated, there are 10 million less of them. So we have a significant gap in filling that. That's why even though unemployment numbers are so low, workforce numbers are up, there are just not enough people out there for jobs. And that coupled with the whole mentality that we told folks forever. I know when I was in high school, the old thing was, you know, you got to go to college or you're not going to amount to anything. Well, the problem is in Ohio, we told that to all of our students, and then we wondered why they left a state that, you know, our big industry is manufacturing here in Ohio. So it's also trying to connect folks. So Carol and I this morning talked to a uh, group of teachers at Teacher Boot Camp. Uh, this was out at the NCO ESC. And what that program does, and this is really kind of distilling it down and not getting into the weeds of it, uh, the teachers go through this program. They're going to tour a lot of the manufacturers in Tiffin and rural uh, Seneca County and see what those jobs are like. So when students come up to them and ask about different positions, they can effectively ex explain to those students what it's like to work, work at Church and Dwight or to work at Taiho and some of the manufacturers because many of our teachers or guidance counselors, there were several guidance counselors there as well today, have never been in a factory. They can't describe that setting. So this cohort of folks are the first ones in, in Tiffin. Uh, I know Fostoria did the program last year uh, and glowing results. In fact, one person in this year's class took the program last year and wanted to do it again to learn more. And that's what, these are the creative ways that we're going to have to work if we want to continue to build our workforce. Because as I go forward and we work with projects, um, I pulled it up this morning. I don't want to throw everything on the screen and, and I'm, I'm not one that likes to read from PowerPoints. As you've noticed, I'm really not even talking about what I've put on the screen tonight is that uh, um, we currently have just under myself at the office, I have more than $200 million in projects that I'm working on, and that totals over 400 jobs. The problem is we have a lot more manufacturers who wish to expand. I've visited three this year already that have told me that they would expand, as in more employees and expand the size of their facility if they could find the workforce locally. 
Uh, in fact, I visited four in the last two months, and between those four building or four businesses, they need 200 plus employees. They're looking for one manufacturer alone said they'd hire 100 people tomorrow if they could find them. Uh, wages have come up. Uh, one of our, our newer manufacturers in the community, American Plastics, just bumped their wages to $22 an hour, which is a very competitive wage in Tiffin. Uh, if you look at the Tiffin, Tiffin dollar compared to other communities' dollars, uh, the average dollar in the United States is worth almost $1.25 in Tiffin. So you're making more money here, even if you're, you may be able to have that same position in Columbus making $24, $25 an hour, that wage at $22 an hour is actually more effective and better use of your money in Tiffin. But folks don't know this. We have to continue to try to tell that story uh, going forward. So I should probably talk about a few things up here on the slide, though, since I put it up. Um, we are continuing to work at housing. Uh, the next slide will talk about that. And then the other big thing I want to touch on is we're getting ready to submit for the site, uh, site Ohio Wave 5 rollout. Uh, Adam and I attended a course uh, a couple of weeks ago where they talked about this, and this is allowing us, we can submit manufacturing properties anywhere in the county uh, and essentially get them site certified, and it's being paid for by the state through Jobs Ohio. So we're working with that. We really don't need anything from you at this time. Uh, we're aware of the properties that are out there, and we're going to be submitting several of them. We can have them certified. They'll come out and kind of run a lot of the traps of it, do research on the site, so that a manufacturer that may look to locate here in the future will understand the, the either problems with the site or knowing that it's shovel ready, uh, that they can come in without fear of buying the site because there's either hidden pollutants or a wetlands or whatever it may be. So um, we'll have more to that coming up in the future. But if you wanna hit the next slide. Uh, the pipeline, uh, that's our spec building. Uh, we are, are getting very close. We've shown that to quite a few uh, potential clients. Uh, we have a final site visit scheduled for next week. Uh, with a potential client that I feel really good about. And if that's the case, we should have an announcement sometime a little later this year about a new manufacturer coming to town. So don't tell too many of the other manufacturers because they're all, <laughs> as you know, that everyone's trying to hire more folks here in Seneca County, but that's a win for us to bring something here. Uh, the business will continue to grow. They have big plans for the site. Uh, we, good news is the housing study that we completed uh, late <laughs> last year and rolled it out this spring, we now have six active housing projects in Seneca County that are ongoing. Um, they're not to the point that they're uh, that they put shovels in the ground, but these these are the best six that I have felt about potential housing uh, in a long time for Seneca County to occur here. So they are all active, uh, either in the process of searching for sites. Some of them have identified sites and are running traps on potential utility costs and those sorts of things. Some of them are in Tiffin, others are out of the county, but by housing developments, I'm not talking about one or two infill homes. We're talking about actual street or two of homes being put in. So uh, we're actively working on six different housing projects here in the county. Uh, project Capua, uh, that is a project for site redevelopment here in the city limits that we continue to work at. One thing that will be located on the site is a restaurant. There are several other improvements to the site. So it's kind of, you know, you see in bigger cities where someone builds a restaurant, but they also put in several other stores or something like that. It's like that, but it's more with the Tiffin spin on things. It's gonna be a smaller site development versus your major, major uh, um, outdoor mall like a Fallen Timbers. But it's going to be great what it's going to bring here to Tiffin. Uh, Project Baratheon is something that is just outside of the city of Tiffin. Uh, however, if that project is successful, uh, there will be a few hundred jobs that would come with that. Uh, we continue to work with a consultant from Columbus uh, in hopes of building a pretty large facility that could exceed 500,000 square feet if successful. And then Project New Dawn, not to be confused with Mayor Dawn, uh, <laughs> that is a site redevelopment project here in the city of Tiffin that encompasses uh, just over 30 acres uh, that is looking at a mixed-use development site uh, uh, coupled with commercial as well as uh, residents slash homes, townhouses that could potentially be constructed in the city limits. So that's just a flavor of the, uh, I believe it's 42 projects totaling over 200 million that I'm managing in the office. The others will talk about some of their things that are going on in their office as well. We don't wanna keep you up here and bore you. We like to come up, hit you with facts, let you know the cool things going on, and then pass the baton as I'm going to do now to our operations manager, Karina Haynes. And then any of us can answer questions at the end if you have it. So Karina, Eit will come up here now uh, since she just got married over the weekend, so. Good evening, as he said, I was recently married and I decided to adopt my husband's name, so I am now Karina Ite. 
Um, so a few things that I've been working on, the Port Authority, last year they had a shortage of rail ties. They put in several of those last year. We are currently working on putting in more of those as they now have a handful of those laying around. Um, the NOW is also working on getting gathering grant information for several upcoming projects that are required by the state of Ohio and the federal government. And I've been working to fill up Aaron's calendar, sorry, with um, several member meetings and business and retention um, meetings as well, just to kind of help Aaron out with that. And then I also attended the OEDA training with the rest of the team last month, and that was very insightful and educational. And then I've been onboarding our intern, Tim, which I will let him introduce himself here in a minute. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tim Bucky. I'm a senior at Heidelberg, and I'm this summer's intern at TSEP. And I'm documenting and putting pictures on our website of all the businesses downtown, or not all the businesses, all the businesses that we have on our website. And there are bios that go with them, so I'm just doing the picture part. And I'm also taking photos at different events downtown, such as the recent parking lot party for Third Thursday and the farmer's market and other events. Thank you. So you saw there a study, great study in contrasts. Aaron, a recovering politician, so a little bit longer. <laughs> and then uh, Karina, nice and short, straight into the point. Uh, my name is Adam Gilmore. I'm the development coordinator. Uh, and I handle your community development on uh, your behalf through TSEP. Uh, uh, so one of the main things that I have been working on that is really going to be impactful for the city of Tiffin is the brownfield evaluation at the Ralph's parking lot. That site at 17 North Washington Street uh, is something a property that has been held by TSEP kind of on the city's behalf in order to get it cleaned up and certified for either redevelopment or to come back into city ownership. So this was funded entirely by state funds through the targeted brownfield assessment program. We worked with the Seneca County Land Bank to get that money. This has been an ongoing process for a year and we are just now bringing that to completion. So 17 North Washington Street is the northern parcel that was being evaluated that is closest to Ralph's. Uh, and that was cleared by a phase one evaluation. So there were no contaminants there and they did not need to move forward into a phase two evaluation, which deals with boring. Now the zero North Washington site, uh, unfortunately did need to, did not pass that phase one evaluation and needed to move on and have boring samples done. And I think this project is a fantastic example of kind of how TSEP manages projects in that it's a lot of coordination between different entities, specifically in this case, the city and the consultants that the state hired, CT consultants, to do the work. So we were trying to figure out the dates, figure out when exactly is this going to be happening, and we worked with Nick and the Public Works Department trying to get the lot blocked off, make sure that that was all clear and ready to go and that no problems were going to be had there. That work was completed late last month, and we are now waiting on those results to come back. The initial indications are that that is going to be a clean site, that there's not going to be any new contaminants. But once those final results come back in, that's when we'll know for sure and uh, can, can begin considering the future of that parking lot and what uh, work needs to happen there in the future. As far as other community development, uh, activities that have been taking place over the past six months or so. Obviously, Mayor Don, I know you will love to hear about CDBG some more, so I will keep this short. Uh, coordination between Common Ground and the city is right now kind of where we're at in that project. That project is ongoing. Uh, TSEP is the administrator of the CDBG program. And so right now we are making sure that the public services component of the CDBG grant, which was funded last year, is taking place. So I receive the least uh, invoices from Common Ground, pass those on to Kathy, who has been a fantastic partner for us in making sure that that project is moving along nicely. And I can report that we are on track uh, at hitting the established goals that we submitted with that grant application. 
Finally, the capital appropriations for the community kitchen, that was $300,000. We are now in the application phase of that with the Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services Board. And as that process moves forward, it will that application will get approved and it will go to the controlling board. And once that's approved, that $300,000 tranche of money will be freed up for the community kitchen's construction. That will be bid out and then we will move on to construction of that project. It's been a long road for that project. It first appeared, I think, on our radar in 2021 with the Dream Big Tiffin uh, process and now it is finally getting very close to coming to fruition. That is all I have, so I will now introduce our uh, workforce expert, our workforce consultant, Carol Owen. <coughs> <laughs> I'm Carol with Ohio Means Jobs, Seneca County. Um, I think I need to throw that in there because every time I do one of these presentations with the team, I get asked or about my new job. So I do still work for Job and Family Services. Okay, next slide. I'll just start with some of the things that I've been doing. Um, my regular job orders, I'm on track to exceed what I did last year. Still making a lot of reimbursements to employers for training. That includes both training of new hires, um, reimbursing either 50% or 75% of the wages for a period of time, and incumbent worker training where we work with um, people who've been with the employer at least six months to upgrade their skills. One of the things that we're doing, um, I think that's been really great with the incumbent worker training is using older skilled workers to train newer workers that have been there for a while, looking to move up, um, had a construction company that had a maintenance person that was going to be retiring. They didn't know what they were going to do, how they were going to replace that person. So we reimbursed 50% of the trainer's wages while he worked with the newer people so they could move into his position once he left. Okay, next screen. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about the manufacturing showcase. Uh, it'll be October 7th this year, will be our eighth year. And we're actually going to move that to Sentinel this year. We found that in the last few, couple years, we've had Sentinel bringing equipment to Tiffin University. So rather than having that process, we thought we would just have it at Sentinel. Um, that would enable us to utilize more of the equipment at Sentinel, hopefully do some more hands-on activities with the students and show them even more what manufacturing is in the county. Um, so apprenticeships, I have some stats here. Um, Ohio has almost 21,000 active apprentices in 600 programs with 400 employers. That puts Ohio third in the nation behind California and Texas for the number of apprenticeships. They're a proven model of training. Um, I always get asked if people leave once they've been trained. Apprenticeships, no. Um, it, the stat is 90% of people that have been trained through an apprenticeship program stay with the employer that trained them. Seneca County, we're part of the Greater Ohio Workforce Board, which is 43 member counties in Ohio. And I've talked before about Seneca County being the first to have an employer participate in this board-sponsored program. Uh, we continue to lead, so we've had 11 employers have, been, have had board-sponsored programs in the Workforce Board area. Three of those have been in Seneca County. We've had 18 finish the program out of the 43 counties, seven of those from Seneca County. And we have currently nine of the 41 active apprentices in the Great Ohio Workforce Board. So previously, or currently, manufacturers are the only ones taking advantage of that program, but we're looking to, I'm trying to explore some other options with that. Um, I looked, the city of Piqua has a program where the firefighter paramedic program, where they're upgrading their EMTs to paramedics through um, apprenticeships. And there's a water systems operations specialist in Muskingum County. So just some things that we might want to explore, expand beyond manufacturing to help with the workforce. So in conclusion, if any employers need assistance with hiring, training funds, or establishing an apprenticeship program, um, please send them to contact me. My information is on the TSEP website. And I will turn it over to Donna Gross. Thank you, Carol. Um, again, my name is Donna Gross, and I am the downtown Tiffin Main Street Manager. I've just finished about three months in my new position. I want to thank Tim for taking a great headshot of me and erasing all of my wrinkles. So, <laughs> Tim. Um, I just want to give you a little report on the momentum that we have downtown and what our committees have been working on. Um, our Business Enhancement Committee, um, monthly, they host a trivia night downtown, which is a great way to bring people downtown Tiffin that normally wouldn't come down and visit. So we have grown from about 30, 35 people on a monthly basis to over 80, which is a huge increase in bringing people downtown and just getting them used to the parking, walking around where they can eat, um, shop, and really enjoy the downtown. 
also our business enhancement group is, um, th what they've done is uh, taken kind of the gavel and um, done some training with our downtown merchants committee, which is really helpful for our business owners to have a little bit of training in how to run a business. Some little tips, we just finished a tax tips um, for our downtown business owners. And it was a great way for them to ask a professional accountant, um, things that they can do to help their business grow. This month coming up, we have um, another educational piece on bereavement and um, just some post uh, post crisis that could happen in a, in a business in our community. So it's just a nice way for our business enhancement group to prepare our downtown merchants. Um, one of the other responsibilities I don't have up there is our business enhancement group, twice a year, they will reach out to all of our downtown businesses and just check in on them, see what they need, what is going on, um, and just offer any help in any way. They can always contact me um, at any time. And with that, they're gonna have a few new businesses that they will be contacting in the future. We already have the deli, which I'm sure most of you have visited and tasted that delicious food. We have Wildflower Salon and Studio that should be opening this month. Um, and then also we have a few expansions, which is really exciting for our businesses. Um, Rose & Co. has added an events type business um, to their shop and yours with every stitch, the seamstress, Danielle in the Laird building has grown so much. She had to move to a larger location within the building, which is really exciting. And then today we released a press uh, release for Ralph's Scratch, Dent, and Delight, which is gonna be such a wonderful addition to our community to be able to buy um, appliances at a discounted rate. Um, our design committee, sorry, I skipped ahead. Sorry, we're good with merchants. <laughs> um, just to give you a little bit more uh, detail about our merchants, we have changed our format and our name for our merchants. Um, it's just a new fresh start for the group. Um, it is more of an educational time for the businesses to come together, like I mentioned before, the tax tips and the educational piece, um, just to gather information on what is going on downtown, um, how that they can... Um, be part of the activities that we have and benefit from that. Um, and then it'll also be a time of question and answer for um, for the merchants to ask a lot of our committees that are there and just to bounce ideas on and off each other. So with that said, it is a very positive moving forward um, vibe that we have at our merchants meeting. And I think everyone is really happy to see that change. Okay. Now design. Um, design is, um, is working really hard as always, um, keeping our downtown looking absolutely beautiful. Um, we love the flowers that are up all over town. So thank you all for doing that. It looks amazing. Um, and we are also having our second uh, downtown cleanup, which is going to be this coming Saturday. Um, and we have st started what's called a litter league. So it is a way to kind of compete with other teams and see who can pick up the most trash and um, win prizes for that as well. Um, and then also, um, I just wanted to, on a side note, um, talk about the facade enhancement grants because that is also part of our beautiful downtown. And uh, we've been working hard with Nick and ABR on our new online a process for filling out the facade enhancement grants and it's working very, very well. All right, so our marketing committee seems to be exploding. Um, for some reason, I'm not quite sure, I don't understand algorithms on social media, but in the past 90 days, our presence on Instagram has grown 111.2%. Um, and our increase on Facebook visits is 121.5%. Um, that is just extraordinary. Again, I don't understand algorithms, but we are in a really good positive momentum going forward um, for people just finding us on social media and keeping up with the wonderful things that we have going on downtown. Um, we also have um, a presence on WTTF and our monthly community updates. So we'll be having one coming up pretty soon talking about our new events that are coming up. And then... WTOL loves our press releases. Um, they pick up our stories quite frequently. We had a really nice one on the Delhi Cafe in Frost Village. And then recently, John Monk came out and did a 
fabulous piece on um, this mural that was discovered on Court Street, and it was a really fun story to be a part of that um, and just show, showcase our beauty in downtown Tiffin. Um, our third Thursdays are a huge hit. Um, I'm not going to blame it on the weather, but it has been absolutely beautiful weather for our third Thursdays, the last two. The artist stroll brought in over 500 people downtown, and our parking lot party you estimated over 1,000 people, which was just um, wonderful to see that. So speaking of our third Thursdays, um, on our next slide, what we've done is hired a couple different video teams to produce some promotional videos for us. Um, ben Bodart Productions um, is doing our third Thursday recaps, and then Dead Shark Productions is doing more of a subject theme promotional videos for us. So this is just a little sampling of what the Bodart Productions is doing for us on a monthly basis for our third Thursday recaps. <clears throat> No audio. I could sing it. <laughs> We're going to have so much fun. What do you think, Tucker? Are you ready to go? Let's go see some dogs. You actually put a GoPro on the dog. night to come out in downtown Tiffin. There are so many activities for our furry friends and for humans alike. We have pet agility contests. We have Polaroid pictures. There's actually a wedding ceremony where you can have your pets get married. <laughs> a pet costume contest. Tons of treats are going to be passed out from our local vendors and our merchants downtown. And it's just a really fun night to come out, bring your pets downtown, and make some new friends, and have a great time in downtown Tiffin. at our Barking Lot Party tonight. Next month for Third Thursday is a brand new event that we're bringing to downtown Tiffin. It's called Vet de la Musique. It is Day of Music. So come on out next month for Third Thursday and enjoy a great night downtown Tiffin. I was actually voluntold to do that, so <laughs> um, I'm enjoying it, though. Um, so hopefully I will see all of you out uh, for our third Thursday next week um, for our new event, Fête de la Musique. Um, and then last but not least is our Downtown Development Committee. They are so hard at work um, on a monthly basis meeting. Right now we are going through our nominations for our Heritage Ohio Awards, which will be submitted um, to Heritage Ohio in the next month. Um, we are also planning our Main Street visit. We'd like to go visit another community that is also a Main Street and just learn from them, um, see what kind of ideas they have, um, something that we can implement. And we, are, we just chose, we're going to Vermilion on August 9th um, up by the lake. So hopefully that'll be nice. Um, and then also um, our Downtown Development Committee just has ongoing training. Um, we have webinars that are uh, produced and provided by Heritage Ohio. Um, Aaron and I are actually going to be the speakers at one of these webinars in August. We're going to be talking about our um, facade enhancement grant and teaching everyone in Ohio about that. And then um, just our quarterly revitalization series. I attended my first one with Liz in Kent, Ohio. We're actually in a church that was turned into a brewery restaurant. It was a very cool building and just learned a whole lot about um, Google and uh, social media and that kind of training. Plus, I got to meet on the second day with a whole bunch of other Main Street managers um, from around the state of Ohio and, and connect with them as well. So I'm enjoying my job. Um, I'm loving it. It's got a lot of fun energy to it. And I love the energy that we have and the momentum of downtown Tiffin. And I'm just really excited to keep Tiffin moving in the same direction and a great place to live and to visit. So thank you. <laughs> I think that concludes our presentation uh, from everyone from the team, but it really is a pleasure to uh, continue to serve Tiffin and all of Seneca County in this current role. Uh, I've been here now uh, just under a year, 
Uh, hard to believe, but time does go quick. So if there are any questions for uh, anyone, council or administration, we're happy to answer them. If not, uh, you can get back to your meeting. I just have one question. Sure. What, what was that third Thursday event that's coming up next week? Uh, yeah, Fet de la Muse. Yeah. I'm Fet, glad you said that because I wasn't going to uh, pronounce it in my report. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, you don't mind. Okay. So Vicki uh, was watching a show called Emily in Paris. Has anyone ever seen that show? Pretty I good. have not, but she was binge watching it. And in Paris, in France, they have an annual event called Fête de la Musique, which is Day of Music. And she was watching this and thought, we have to bring this to Tiffin. This would be amazing to have uh, acoustic street performers on every corner. Uh, we, we thought we came to a little bit of a halt because we weren't sure about the music licensing. We had um, Bryce Kuhn look into the music license that we have at the Splash Pad and it encompasses all of downtown Tiffin. So we are covered for that event, which was kind of a, a breath of fresh air, but there will be from five to seven, about 30 different performances all throughout downtown on street corners playing guitars. We have um, country music, we have R&B, we have uh, one gentleman who's going to beatbox. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. And then from there, seven to nine will be at the East Green Amphitheater and the Cherry Cherry Bombs will be performing there. So it's going to be a really fun. Who's in the Cherry Bombs? Et de la music. <laughs> I'm glad she pronounced it because I was going to skip over that. <laughs> sure. Any other uh, questions, comments? Yeah, I do have one more question um, about the, the Litter League. I think that's a really important part of... Uh, you know, taking care of your downtown. So, how could people get involved? Since we may have people You're down. Who'd be this is noble. Just. just. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, on our downtown Facebook page, under our events, is the downtown cleanup. On that event is a sign up genius link link where you can click and sign up for that. Or you can just show up on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Bring a group of people. If you want to come and compete with other um, other teams, you can do that. Or you can just come by yourself and just help us uh, pick up litter around town and make downtown look more beautiful than it is right now. Great. And you, you get so a free t-shirt. <laughs> because they were talking about each bag was like a home run. Are they still doing it that way? Yes, they are. Like they're I, running the bases. Mm -hmm. I kept hinting. I don't think Public Works would mind if you emptied some of our trash cans so. <laughs> while you're out and around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you guys are more than welcome to leave if you so choose. We will not be offended. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I will blow through. Since it's 8 o'clock, I will blow through my updates. And so I like to go over stuff in the past. So there was a nice community turnout as our Tiffin Fire Department hosted an EMS open house from 1 to 4 Sunday, May 21st to kick off Emergency Medical Services Week and to honor the memory of Tiffin Firefighter Paramedic Sean Tyler. They had a really nice turnout over, they thought over 100 um, residents going in there. It's very interesting. Uh, the Tiffin Police Department Citizens Academy graduated another class Sunday the 28th. On May 30th, work began on the Ella Street Bridge. Ella Street will be closed to through traffic until the end of November, weather permitting. And the East Perry Street full rebuild began also on the 30th. One lane will be open to traffic, but expect possible timing delays. It's going to be a long summer. Please be patient and allow extra time to navigate around Tiffin because that's not the only projects going on in Tiffin. So please be patient. Upcoming events, on June 7th, I will be traveling to Toledo. I've been asked to serve on the steering committee for the 2023 Ohio Women's Leadership Summit. And as they just mentioned, our third Thursday will be on the 15th to salute music. I'm not pronouncing the name. <laughs> and Rumpke's Bulk Pickup Week begins the week of the 12th on your regularly scheduled day. You are allowed to set out five items, and they must be less than 75 pounds. And we also have Blake Austin from Rumpke is here to answer any questions you may have. Good evening, everybody. Um, I, yeah, like she said, I don't have a formal presentation. I just uh, was t talking to Nick. Um, thought it'd be a good idea for me to come in, touch base with you guys, um, address any concerns you guys may have, and um, also discuss a bit. Yeah, the um, summer cleanup event is this is this upcoming week or starting next Monday. It's 
Um, I talked to our operations team, they wanted to emphasize that it, um, it will be limited to five items per household. Um, and that if any household does have more than five items, they will still take five items. They will just take a picture of the household to keep on record. So when they, they call into you or they call into our customer service team, we will have a record of if anybody's ab abusing this program we have. So if you do have anybody that reaches out with um, complaints or anything like that, please um, get in touch with myself or Nick and we will um, we'll work to get those, those issues resolved as soon as we can. But um, does anybody have any questions about the event? our service in general or anything like that. Blake, would you like to cover, I, I know I always see furniture and mattresses out there. Do you want to talk about that at all? Like they should be covered or anything like that? Uh, yeah. If you can have them plastic wrapped, um, that's more of just a safety thing for our guys so that we don't, we don't know why it's being set at the curb. It could just be, you got a new remodeling or it could be bed bugs. So we, um, out of caution and safety for our team, we ask that everything that's um, upholstered, basically, so um, be plastic wrapped. Um, and if there are any issues, like I said, you can, if there are any questions about what should or shouldn't be wrapped, call our customer service team. They're more than more than willing to help you out. Plus it'd probably help too if it's raining so that the yes. stuff doesn't get weighted down even more. Correct. And what about appliances? Um, so TVs are fine. T uh, most basic electronics are fine. The issue, um, you'll run into is with the um, items that have CFC in them. Um, so like some kitchen appliances, mostly like um, refrigerators for the most part, they have Freon inside of them. In order for us to take them, they have to have a sticker from a third party saying that the Freon has been properly removed. Um, that's because items with Freon can't go into the landfill. That's a big EPA violation. That's um, We get in a whole lot of trouble if we put those in the landfill. So if you do have anybody um, trying to get rid of, um, I think it's mostly refrigerators and some freezers, uh, have them reach out to somebody that does see a, or free on removal beforehand before they place it out to the curb. I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks. Sure. Remember um, last year during this week, um, we had a big party with the neighborhood out in the front yard. Me and my brother rolled the grill out and we're cooking, take all the kids in, come back out and somebody had come by and taken our grill because <laughs> <laughs> now, not to their defense, it looked like it was out by the road. It was kind of close, but I guess a little public service announcement to keep uh, your valuables closer to your house. You know, <laughs> um, it is a busy week for you know people to be riding around trying to get those goodies before you guys take them for right. like scrap metal and stuff. So. A little public service announcement, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we will We will be collecting anything that's curbside, so if there's something you would like to s remain on your property, I guess keep it a few feet from the curb. <laughs> it was my brother's grill, so I didn't care as much. <laughs> Nick. Thank you, and I just wanted to add for uh, for, for Blake and, and for our, uh, our residents to know that the Rumpke does pick up bulk materials all throughout the year, not just during this week. Um, if you are interested in that service, just visit their website. Um, I've done it myself. It's a very easy process. You can call or email them um, with your item. Uh, there is a small fee associated with that, but it's, a, again, a great service, and luckily you don't have to wait until uh, this week in June to, uh, to get rid of your items whenever that happens. And um, Rumpke has been very good to work with on that. Anything else we can help you guys with this evening? No, but it is quite entertaining to see all the caravan of vehicles circling my area. <laughs> and so I, when I'd asked Blake, I said, do you really get that much stuff? I asked you this at a meeting a couple yeah. months ago. I said, do you really get that much stuff? Because they all circle around and pick everything up. And I was amazed at the tonnage you said yeah, that it's you gonna still be a, pick up. Probably uh, probably over 125 tons we'll collect from the curbside this week alone, So or next week alone. So it's it's an intensive undertaking. And it's very much appreciated that you guys add that to our trash service. Of course. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, it's often a fight between my wife and I, but she, um, when we have pasta, do you guys care if you, we rinse out the sauce and the glasses after, or will you not take those? If you give it like a quick once over, that's, that's good enough. You don't have to get in there with like sponge and like scrub it in, but if you can put some water in there, shake it around a little, just to, just to get a decent amount of it out, that's, that's good enough for us. I'm not going to tell her I asked you that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> When I don't think people realize also that for a really reasonable cost, you know, because some people complain that their totes aren't big enough for the garbage, 
it's only, what is it, 250 for the recycle and 350 for the garbage or vice versa to add that to your service, and that's really reasonable. Yeah, it's, you, yeah, it may be, it's 250 or 350 I, I, don't yeah, I can't remember which I don't remember goes. which is which, but yeah, it's, that's what it costs to add an additional cart per month. And so there's you know, something else to keep in mind, too. So the website's very interesting to check all that out <laughs> and to see what you can and cannot recycle because that changes all the time also. It, it changes in that we're always looking to add things. Once we put something on the list, we try very hard to not, not take it off. Yeah, I so. wish you took the clams. Yeah. We're working on it. Okay, good. <laughs> and a lot of people say, what's the clams? It's like when you get your fruits, like strawberries, in the plastic containers and they shut. That's why they're called clams and they do not take them at this time. And I was putting them in there until we toured your facility and found out you weren't supposed to do that. So public service announcement out there, don't put your clams in there. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Anything else for Blake? Really appreciate you coming up tonight, too. So Thank you, guys. Thank you. And always, if you have any questions, um, Nick has my contact information. If you don't already have mine, you can get it from him, reach out. I'll help you guys any way I can. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we are now under uh, report of the officer, clerk of council and forest. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, we are now under director of finance, Kathy Kaufman. No report, Madam President. Thank you. We are now under director of law, Brent T. Howard. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a, a few items. Um, uh, first, um, I apologize uh, to uh, Kevin, uh, your uh, last name, Reesner. Not Ressner, like Reesner. I said at the beginning of me. Apologize. No Kevin Reesner. Um, the next item um, in Ordinance 23 36, um, you are, um, you've entered, you'll introduce tonight the approval of the tax budget, which is a required um, a process you have to go through to submit to the county um, for. Um, um, your allocation of real estate taxes um, and a justification for those uh, for your share. We follow a statutory procedure and that procedure requires a public hearing. Um, the public hearing has to have a uh, advance notice by 10 days. So um, I would suggest and tonight um, um, you can either um, schedule the required public hearing for June 19th, which is when the second uh, reading of Ordinance 23-36 will be read, or you can do it at the third reading, which is um, July the 3rd. Um, but in any event, we would need then very quickly, especially if, if the meeting is, if the um, public hearing is held on the 19th, we need, would need to get the uh, notice to the uh, newspaper uh, promptly in order to meet that 10-day notice. So, um, Madam President, uh, you should call a public hearing on Ordinance 23-36 at the beginning of one of those meetings. The next item, um, at the last Committee of the Whole meeting um, in May, um, you had um, uh, decided on a set of instructions that you wanted to submit or petition instructions you want to submit to the Board of Elections. Uh, following uh, the Committee of the Whole meeting at your direction, I submitted the instructions that uh, you had approved to the Board of Elections. Um, in response, um, I received notice that uh, the Board will meet on July 18th. Uh, that's tentative. I've not heard um, that that's been finalized. I'll let you know um, if that is the case and also the time. But I understand that at that meeting, they will consider the city's uh, proposed set of instructions um, for petitions for the city of Tiffin municipal elections. But then they also will consider uh, their own um, what they call uh, petitioner helpful tips. And I gave you a copy of the most recent version that uh, the Board of Elections staff had put together. 
um, have kind of received the indication that um, the, uh, the, the board may just approve one set of instructions or helpful tips and may not adopt a second um, one for the City of Tiffin petition. But that's not been finalized. And uh, there is a public meeting, as I said, the board is holding on July 18th and they'll consider and discuss the matter. So uh, if anyone would like to attend, um, again, I'll finalize the, um, uh, the date and time and location for, for that meeting. Uh, the last item I have is uh, the golf, golf cart ordinance, which is being read uh, tonight for the uh, second time. Uh, it's ordinance 23-30 that involves uh, golf carts, which also are are um, identified as under speed vehicles, and then also a separate category, utility vehicles. Um, I know you'll have some discussion about that ordinance this evening. Uh, there are a couple of items that um, people have contacted me that you may want to consider um, a possible amendment to the ordinance prior to adoption. The first is a question of whether LED lights are uh, appropriate or should it, uh, you not um, regulate uh, that aspect? Um, and I, I'm not telling you um, um, other than just identifying issues because um, maybe you know a lot more about uh, these type of vehicles. The other item is the height of the rear lights. Um, currently in the, um, the um, ordinance, um, they have to be at 36 inches above the ground. And um, um, I understand that that may be an excessive too high of, of a uh, distance from the ground for a typical golf cart. I don't know that for sure, but that's something that you may want to have a discussion, get public input, do further research. And if you choose to make an amendment, you could do that um, before passage, um, which is scheduled for the next meeting in June. So those are a couple items that uh, you may want to consider and we may hear from the public uh, this evening under oral communications. Any questions uh, for me regarding any of the items that uh, I presented? If not, that concludes my report. Thank you, Law Director. Um, we are now under written communications. Thank you. We have Finance Director's Request for Legislation, number F23-16, to amend the 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the Fire Department budget. Finance Director's Request for Legislation F23-16 has been prepared for tonight's meeting as Ordinance 23-37. And that concludes the written communications. We are now under oral communications. If there's anybody who would like to speak from the public, please come to the podium, announce your name, sign in, and um, we'll say maybe five minutes per person. Hello, my name is Beth Schweitzer, and I am addressing the board tonight. I wanna to thank you very much for allowing me to do that, Madam President. And uh, it was brought to my attention during the last meeting that one of the reasons for uh, the denial of the uh, representative to the Board of Health was because there were concerns from other members of the community, not just the city of Tiffin. And it concerned me because I would hope that as we are considering who we are going to have represent the city of Tiffin on the Board of Health, that would be considered the concerns of the residents of the city of Tiffin. I want to assure you that the other residents of the county are represented through the District Advisory Council appointments from the uh, trustees who appoint them. They're represented by all of the townships, as well as two representatives from the city of Fostoria. So I just wanted to express my concerns as a resident of the city of Tiff, and I think it's very important that we have a broad uh, range of opinions, and we want to have everyone represented in the community, and I'm afraid that perhaps if we are listening to just a segment of the community, we'll have a very biased Board of Health. So that is my concern, and I thank you very much again for allowing me to speak that. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address council? 
I just want to advise everybody that my wife takes my granddaughters out to the city pool. So it's very nice. But there's a couple of, I guess you call them bullies out there. They're taking kids' money out of their tennis shoes. And, you know, and I don't know whose responsibility that is to, not to police, but to watch. And to the lifeguards, I don't know if that's their job because they're supposed to watch kids in the pool. There's a lot of going on of profanity and stuff like that. So, you know, it makes your day not as nice as it would be if you didn't have that out there. So I was kind of hoping the chief was here. I know it's not, probably not his job, but maybe you guys can decide how we can correct that sometime. Thank you. Do you mind introducing yourself as well? For uh, my name is Bob Shiver. I live at 140 Lincoln Road. Thank you. If I can just follow up, Bob, just to the, the first part, did you say, uh, you, I know you mentioned the profanity, but what was the about um, well, money? Just bring a couple bucks to get a drink or something, and these boys are going around taking it out of their shoes. Okay. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just not a good thing. Have, has that been reported to the uh, the uh, uh, lifeguard just, or the it park? It just happened department? Yeah, this weekend, so I said I'm going up here today. I thought I'd tell you guys, I was kind of hoping the chief was here, but. Okay. Now well, you know about it. So we we'll can see. we can follow that up with both police, and then also the park and recreation director too. Okay. And I just um, want to let you know what's going on, and maybe they can come up with a way to stop it. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate uh, you bringing the concern to council. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, to, to piggyback off of the law director, there, there is a manager at the pool at all times. Um, uh, you know, for yourself and anyone else, uh, you know, if you see something, say something. Um, if you notice that. Uh, that's happening or there's any kind of, you know, bullying, if you will, um, you know, feel free to let the manager know um, they there's are only three or four guys. They're 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 ruins everybody. Uh, yeah. Understandable. But they're there to uh, to help keep those things at bay. OK, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would wish to address council? Can I say something about the golf court orders or do I wait till that comes up? No, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right, since Steve's right here, what I'm going to say. He comes to my house to look at my car. He had no problem with anything on my car. But he said, I said, where'd you come up with the 36 inches? He says, he measured his ranger's license. So that's where that came from. And I don't know if it should be higher or not, or we should have a different way. But I think we should go by the Ohio reg and let the chief decide if the vehicle is safe during his inspection. I mean, if it's got dim lights or, you know, don't approve, don't give him a permit. Just go for that now during the trial. Then when the trial's over, you can decide if you want to change. Go ahead. Yeah, as I have a question, if I could, um, because I want to make sure that we get something that is workable, um, that uh, people who have golf carts, uh, they don't have to, um, they are able to drive them as long as they are, are kind of have standard type of equipment. And, and so my question, I guess, is um, what is the standard height of, a, um, of lights from the ground for the, the rear tail lights? And brake lights. Is 36 an impossibility? Because I've talked to others after I got your email, and they said that that would almost make it look like a, a monster vehicle. There's nothing at 36. Mine are 30, and I don't know. Do you know what I think around 12. 12, 12 a trailer, they're 12 inches off the ground. And those little scooters are what? Trailers this far off the ground. Trailers or I did talk to Todd Sarka. He's got four trailers. He drives all over the United States, <coughs> 12 inches off the ground. So I think maybe just for now, go with Ohio regs and let the chief decide if it's safe. And then when the trial's over, you guys can decide if something needs to be or if the chief or whoever can decide if something needs to be changed. <laughs> Don't approve it if it's not safe. The guy's got dim lights on or something. Just say you're going to have to get your lights fixed. I mean, they make meters. You can check the brightness of lights. But I just wonder. I'm glad Steve is here because he's the one that come up with 36. I think he agrees that it could be variable. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. 
I understand your point about that. And 36 does seem too high, but low seem, Steve's point on having them up higher is for protection. But I would hate to see us put it like, say, at 12 inches, and then we decide, well, we don't like that. We better raise it to 24. And then these people stuck all that money into the golf cart at 12, and now we change it to 24. I, I think you really need to find a common ground and is set it at that. Is there in Ohio, Ray, about height? I, I'm not, a, not, I'm not that aware I of that. that I, I can do research and find out. I, when you buy <laughs> typical golf carts, how high are they? Some are low, some are high. It Mine are 30, over 30 inches, but I don't want to get anybody else excluded because... You know, some, some golf carts are extended higher with bigger tires. Right. So they're higher than a, a stock golf cart. Like a golf course golf cart, they're lower. And they're probably, at, I'd say, 10. I'm not sure. I don't know for sure, but... But while we're talking about it, I did see two golf carts and he saw one driving all over town. One on Nelson Street Sunday, came in from like the VFW, crossed Gwent Street, went up to the light, turned left in front of Washington School. There was a guy down getting gas at, uh, I call it Sony Junction, next to the Clover Club there. Filled it up, just took right off down the street. And then he saw one in the park. And, and the foyer. Yeah. An older lady and man. And they drove, I think they must live at Hedgegate. I think they live at Hedgegate. So, sure. They're doing it now. And we're sitting here waiting and for you guys to say it's okay. It Everybody else is driving. On it. I mean, we got licenses, insurance, and we're legal. And, and that's my wow. concern. Once this starts, they're going to all, without getting special regs. All right. John. Uh, I have a golf cart question, as I don't own one. Are they all standard with lights? Or do people own them without? Do they do they come that way? Is that the way that works? Not necessarily. You got to pay for it if you want them to be legal, street legal. Okay. Yeah, you got to up you got to upgrade them to be street legal. A right. lot of them don't have. And a lot of them don't have blankers and seat belts. And, you know, that's why they got to be inspected and make sure they have all that. I think just for the record, do you mind signing in as well? Just since we've had some back and forth here, I feel like that would be helpful for Ann and in introducing yourself. I think everybody knows me, Urban Elkert, yeah. 617 North and Dusty Street. Thank you. So, did you have something to say, Steve? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be citizen, Steve. Uh, Steve Leopard, 366 Clinton Avenue, Tiffin. Uh, so, seeing in the uh, uh, requirements that were presented to us uh, by the police chief, uh, I think there was an item in there that brake lights, turn signals must be able to be seen at a 300 foot or something of that nature. Is that correct, uh, Brent? I'm looking here, um, 75 feet. Okay, I, I was thinking it was much longer than that, but, but regardless, uh, if, you have an, if you have an LED, an LED light, uh, um, you're going to be seen from a greater distance, and you, it'll be seen from a lower height. Um, what I would like to see, or when I was when I was a city councilman, was <laughs> I, I would have liked to have seen a high mount brake light mounted somewhere in the 30 inch area or higher. Uh, but. Uh, that's, I really don't think that would be too big of an issue. These guys know how to, how to wire lights in, how to fabricate things. It's, you know, it's really not a big deal for most of these people. Um, Brent? If, if I could add, or clarify, uh, um, one of the requirements, and there is a revised code section, 
that I believe that states this. It uh, says that um, two or more stoplight uh, LED visible from 500 feet, so that's what you were referring yes. to, mm -hmm. with at least one stoplight located 36 inches from the ground center mount. Now, is that is that a, um, a, a difficulty for uh, someone who wants to operate a, a golf cart in our city uh, to comply <coughs> with that um, type of lighting? I, I believe that any of these guys out here could fabricate something off of a roof rail to get you a center mount, you know, 36 inches or higher. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal myself. It's, uh, you know, these guys know what they're doing. <laughs> Council Member Spar? Ours are 30, over 36. Yes. Right on that mark. Yes, when we looked at the, the grab bar on your bumper platform, uh, one would have fit in just beautiful at 32 inches on yours. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, you could have. We could have gotten that high, but yeah. Mm. Okay. Council Member Spar. Law Director, did that say at least thirty-six inches? Yes. So it can be higher than that, like on the canopy, the back of the canopy, but it's but it says center. Right. At least okay. one stop light located thirty-six inches from the ground. At least one. Mount. So the existing ones would be fine as long as you put up at least one center. Correct. 36 or more yeah. higher. Okay. You wouldn't have to have all your tail No, no, no. But it sounded like that's original. Right. But you okay. Can add a, I think I wrote that to you, Brent. Steve and I talked about that. A brake tail light center mounted at least 36. It's just like it says in the Ohio Resign Code. So I think. Are there any other more questions from council members in terms of asking from the public or no? Are there any other comments from the public under oral communication? Okay, seeing none, we are now on motions. Are there any motions? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I would move that we on ordinance amend ordinance 23-30 to follow the Ohio State regulations for height of brake lights with assistance from Chief Pauley. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, I second. Seconded by Council Member Spar. Is there any discussion? So Council Member Perry. This would just be um, talking to Chief Polly about where he feels comfortable about the height of the brake lights is what you're saying? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, it, yeah, I, I do agree with that. Um, I also think um, I would like to see just if you bought a normal golf cart, what 90% of them, you know, what, what the height is. Um, I think the point of this pilot program, I think it'd be a, a, a shame if we made it so hard for people that they really had to to modify them that we didn't see how it worked properly. Um, so I think I don't want to see that, but um, I do like the center mount one um, that we talked about before. Um, I, I envision it up on the canopy myself um, for the most, for safety reasons as well, as long as it's, um, you know, at least 36, but long-winded, I agree. <laughs> and, and from what I interpret this um, motion that um, I would talk to, um, uh, Police Chief Polly, and um, work this language into the the ordinance so that at next um, reading, uh, third reading uh, before passage, we would actually have language that you would specifically adopt um, and approve before before final passage. Is that the understanding of everyone? Yeah, that's my understanding. Since we don't have specific language. In, other than your reference to um, the, the police chief. I agree. Okay. Yep. Is there any further discussion? Okay. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. 
Thacker. Yes. Uh, the motion pass passes five to zero. Yes, Councilmember Perry. Um, just a, I guess, point of discussion. Do we know when um, the first seat, ward seat, is going to be filled? Do we know that information yet? You may know. I, I was actually going to mention that during uh, afterwards, but the Republican Central Committee, um, which has the role of filling that seat since uh, Councilman Leopard was uh, was a Republican, um, they are meeting on Wednesday at seven o'clock at the NCO ESC. It doesn't necessarily mean that they'll approve someone from there, but that is what their business is for that meeting. Um, they have a, a they can choose from a number of different roles. They don't necessarily have to choose a Republican. Um, I will say that there is one candidate for that seat currently um, who is uh, uh, registered um, to uh, to fill that seat. So they, they may choose that or, or any other person for that matter. So um, yes, that'll be this week. They'll be, uh, they'll be deciding on that. Um, potentially that person will be uh, appointed and uh, could be sworn in for the next council meeting. Okay. The only reason I bring it up, um, Obviously, this has come before council before. Uh, it did technically, uh, I don't say, I won't say technically passed, but got majority vote, but was uh, ultimately uh, turned down because we did not, they did not get four votes out of the, uh, out of the seven, because there's only five members at that meeting that, um, and, and three of which that approved, two did not. Um, again, I don't know how long uh, um, Vicky is out of town um, or if they do appoint someone there, but I would hate for, five people to to come into that uh, exact same scenario again. So I didn't know, you know, we can look at it next meeting about putting it on the table for a meeting just to make sure that we have a full uh, council um, to vote on it. But. Are there any other motions? Seeing none, we are now under resolutions and ordinances. Ordinance number 23-28, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $5,778.99 into the Police, Park and Recreation, and Director of Communications budgets. Councilmember Reisner. Um, I move for the passage of Ordinance 23-28. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Councilmember Spar? I'll second that motion. There's been a motion and a second to accept <laughs> Ordinance 23-28. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. And Thacker? Yes. Ordinance 23-28 passes with a vote of five to zero. Ordinance number 23-30 introduced by Daniel Perry. Ordinance enact, enacting chapter 343 of Tiffin codified ordinances allowing and regulating under speed and utility vehicle, vehicle use within the city of Tiffin and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of ordinance 23-30. Ordinance number 23-32, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $13,827 into the street department budget. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-32. Ordinance number 23-34, introduced by Steve Leopard. Ordinance approving the community placemaking grant and the artistic development grant programs to be administered by the Tiffin Municipal Arts Commission. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-34. Ordinance number 23-35 introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending the city's credit card policy to increase credit limits and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-35. Ordinance number 23-36, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance adopting a tax budget for fiscal year 2024, attached hereto as a part hereof, and directing the Director of Finance to deliver the budget to the Seneca County Auditor on or before July 20th, 2023, and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of Ordinance 23-36. <laughs> 
Ordinance number 23-37, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 budget ordinance 22-108 to appropriate $10,000 into the fire department budget. This is, yes, Council Member Reisner. Uh, I move for the suspension of city council's three reading rule and the immediate passage of ordinance 23-37. Thank you, is there a second? Councilman Perry? Yeah, I'll second that motion. There's been a motion and a second to um, forego council's three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance 23-37. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. We talked to the committee of the whole 6.45 to 7 o'clock, and it was explained by City Administrator Dutro about why the need for the $10,000. I just thought if he doesn't mind re-explaining that for the public's benefit during the uh, video portion of the meeting. Okay. Yes, thank you, Councilman Jones. Um, so that is due to uh, some unforeseen repairs on our emergency vehicles, our ambulances and fire truck, um, uh, fire trucks, I should say, um, due to uh, a multitude of factors. Um, we have increased costs both in uh, the service side and the parts side. Um, and as we've had those, those repairs um, to keep our fleet moving forward, um, we did have to ask uh, council to appropriate some more funds into that line item. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Jones. Yes. Perry. Yes. Reisner. Yes. Spar. Yes. And Thacker. Yes. Uh, the suspension passes with a vote of five to zero. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the passage. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Perry? Yes. Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. And Thacker? Yes. Ordinance 23-37 passes with a vote of five to zero. Good legislation. We are now under other business. I'd like to schedule the hearing, um, if we could look at our calendars and decide which would be more appropriate between June 19th and July 3rd. I think I'd rather get it done early and so we give plenty of time. Is anyone opposed to meeting earlier on June 19th? How much time do you? I would say it does not need to be earlier. It would be immediately after roll call. Okay. You could then open a public hearing regarding the budget or tax budget ordinance and it would be just time, part of your regular meeting dedicated to, to that uh, public hearing. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Are we good with the 19th? Mm -hmm. Yep. Madam President, I will say that we're a little shorter on time now with the new way that things are done with the advertiser as far as the cutoff dates. So okay. I'll, would you should be able to get it in, but I just want to make sure. I, if there's any issue, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, we have to have a 10 days in advance is what the statute and requires. And now we have, yeah. Okay. And should I announce that meeting now? Announce it now. Okay. Be fine. Uh, I would like to announce a public hearing for Ordinance 23-36 regarding uh, the tax budget for fiscal year 2024 on June 19th during the regular city council meeting. Is there any other business to come before council at this time? Seeing none, we will adjourn. You even sat through the whole thing. Yeah, she did. Good job. Yeah, great job. I was nervous. I would have been nervous.